Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 1D, where we're going to talk about the history of DNA. We're going to start with DNA replication, a very short-term history of DNA, and then we're going to draw a parallel between the cell theory in biology and what we could call a DNA theory for the continuity of genetic information. Now, here's a diagram showing DNA replication with many of the components shown. This is much, much simpler than the molecularly correct drawing animations that you can find online. Here's a slightly simpler version. Um, I'm going to draw for you a even more simple version, but first I want to just annotate this version with something that's left out to explain what's going on here. So the um, wiggly lines are DNA. Hang on, let's clarify that. So the, the curved lines are DNA, two strands of a double helix being replicated here, separating to form single strands that can then be copied by the process of DNA replication. What's not shown here is who's doing the work, and that's the enzyme DNA polymerase, which is actually a very complex factory of proteins. Which, if we drew it in, would completely obscure what was happening to the DNA. So DNA polymerase has bound to the DNA and has separated the strands and is then inserting new subunits in the single-stranded region, elongating the new DNA strands here, adding new bases, each basis identity determined by base pairing. Because of the polarity of DNA, of DNA the fact that the strands are anti-parallel, um, one new strand is being made in this direction, the other new strand has to be made in the opposite direction. But the same thing is happening at both positions. Now, I'm going to do a simpler drawing of the same process. So, and I won't bother doing the helical structure. I'll just show the two strands of DNA, base paired, continuing off into the distance of miles of DNA, and coming apart under the influence of DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is then synthesizing new DNA by inserting new subunits, checking the base pair for complementarity to the existing base. The same thing is happening on the other side, but in the opposite direction. The most important thing about this process is that it's directed by base pairing. So the base that's inserted here, this new red base, is identical, is paired with this blue base, and it is identical to the blue base that's present here at the same position. So if this blue base was an A and it was paired with a T here, this new red base will be a T and the same at every position as the new DNA is synthesized. So the consequences of this for the relationship between the new molecules and the new two, what we call the daughter molecules, double-stranded DNAs, and the original parent molecule, is that the genetic information in the two daughter molecules is identical, so an A would be inserted here across from this T. The genetic information in each of these is identical to the information that was present when the two blue strands were originally paired with each other. Each daughter molecule consists of one new strand and one old strand. Physically, but genetically, they are both identical to the original strand, original double-stranded DNA. Now, I want to think about this in the 
bigger context, and for a biologist, the bigger context is the evolutionary continuity of life ever, from, ever since the origin of life. So this is the big tree, we call it. It shows the relationships of all of the organisms that are alive now, all the bacteria, um, the bacteria-like cells called archaea, and the eukaryote cells, which includes all the plants and animals. All of these organisms are descended from earlier organisms that in turn are descended from a common ancestor that's the ancestor of all life. Now, this picture is supplemented by something called the cell theory. This is a theory that was developed in around the 1850s but when good microscopes became available and it was possible to see how cells divided. And at that time it was realized and popularized by a German named Virchow that all cells came from existing cells by cell division. Our bodies do not create new cells from scratch when they want them. Instead, all of the cells in our bodies arise by cell division from cells that are already present, all the way back to the original uh, fertilized egg that formed when the egg and sperm fused. And the consequences of this realization is that this means that not just life, but that cells can be traced all the way back, that every cell of every bacterium and every cell of every archaean and of every eukaryote is a direct lineal descendant of cells that were present earlier in evolutionary time all the way back to the very first cell. So cells aren't created from scratch. They all arise by division of existing cells. This is also true of DNA. Every DNA strand, as far as we know, every DNA strand originates by DNA replication using a pre-existing strand as a template. So this means that when we look at this picture, the big tree, it's also a tree showing the evolutionary continuity of DNA. All of the DNA in the bacteria, all the DNA in the archaea, all the DNA in eukaryotes, all the DNA in our bodies are, is direct lineal descendants of DNA that was present in earlier organisms, in earlier cells, all the way back to the very first DNA molecules at the origin of life. And this means that DNA because DNA is also an informational molecule, unlike cells, DNA contains a lot of information about its evolutionary history. And we'll talk more about this later in this module. So what have we done? We've talked about DNA replication, about how each strand in an existing molecule acts as the template for creating a new strand that's complementary. And the result is that each new double-stranded DNA molecule has one old strand and one new strand physically, but genetically is identical to the parent molecule. DNA thus has evolutionary continuity. DNA isn't created from scratch. Every DNA molecule arose by replication of existing DNA. And this means that DNA DNA's information is in some ways a record of evolutionary changes in DNA all the way back to the origin of life. And because DNA is the hereditary material that specifies all the properties of life, this is, makes it an enormously valuable resource for understanding our evolutionary history. We'll talk more about this at the last lectures in this module. Coming up next, we're going to talk about genes. We'll start talking about genes. First, considering what is it that makes some of the DNA sequences in our genome be genes. I hope to see you there.